Notion is just as much about sharing content and collaborating as it is keeping you organized and productive. And with that versatility comes the need to share your content with many types of users and at various levels of access. Notion makes that easy, but it's important to understand all the nuances in order to keep your information safe and your productivity at its highest. Let's explore those nuances in simple and comprehensible terms. And that begins with what I call Notion's sharing hierarchy. At the highest level, you can share your pages publicly or with individual Notion users. And within those individual users, you can share with members of your workspace or guests outside your workspace. And within those members, you can share with all members, specific members, or groups of members. And as you share your Notion pages, you wanna always keep in mind that you're also sharing their sub pages or the pages that you create within them using page blocks. And even more consequentially, when you share a view of a database or you share a linked database, you grant access to the full original database. So let's jump into the first of our top level methods of sharing, making a page public. Here we have a sample page, which is a database of web design inspiration. To make it public, we can open the share menu at the top and then toggle public access. And when we do that, we can choose from two levels of access. Can read is the default and only allows visitors to view the page. If we change it to can comment, any Notion user who signed in can add comments to the page. We can also choose to allow Google and other search engines to index the page. Once the page is indexed, it can appear in search results for relevant search queries. By default, indexing is blocked, but duplication is permitted by default. This gives Notion users a button to duplicate the page to use as a template within their own workspaces. You can prohibit duplication by toggling off that feature. Once your share settings are set, you can copy the page's unique URL with the copy page link button. And then you can paste that URL anywhere you want to share the page. And afterwards, you can return to the share menu to adjust your settings or disable public access at any time. So let's move on to sharing with specific people. When you share with specific people, they need to be signed into their Notion accounts to access the page. If they're not Notion users when you invite them, they'll be prompted to create an account and then they'll be nurtured through the onboarding process. As we saw in the hierarchy, you'll share your pages with two types of users, guests and members. Guests typically include people outside of your internal team, such as contractors, clients, and partners. And you invite guests to specific pages within your workspace. Members are a feature of team and enterprise plans. They usually include the team or the group for which the workspace was created, such as your colleagues, club members, or your family members. As with guests, you can invite specific members to pages, but you can also make pages accessible to all members of your workspace. Any member or guest of a workspace can be included in the person properties of databases. If we jump over to our master projects database, we can see that we have a person property for the project manager. And if we click in to that property to select a project manager, we can choose among the members and guests of the workspace. And then we also have groups. Admins can group members together to make it easy to share pages with them as units. For example, you might have a marketing group for sharing marketing focused pages rather than sharing those pages with each member of the marketing team individually. And when you share a page, it will fall into one of three categories. In your sidebar, you'll see your top level pages grouped by those categories. The categories refer to the page's status with workspace members rather than guests or the public. How a page is shared with guests or the public has no effect on its category in your sidebar. Private pages are not shared with members or groups, but keep in mind that they may be shared with guests or they could even be public. When you share a page with a specific member or a group, it becomes shared. And then when you make pages available to all members of your workspace, it enters the workspace category. As we did with our public page, you'll choose an access level for each user and group. You'll have those same can read and can comment options, but for individual users, you can also choose can edit, which allows them to 
edit the page, but not share it with other users. And then choosing full access adds the ability to invite other users. So let's do some sharing. First, we'll invite an individual member and a guest. Within the share menu, we'll choose invite a person. And in this window, we can see all members and guests of other pages. We can select a member or a guest, or we can type an email address to invite a new guest. So let's select Carly, who's a member, and then let's add my friend, Tim. And when you enter an email address, and that email address is associated with an existing Notion account, you'll see the avatar and the name of that Notion user. Otherwise, you can just click the email address. And then we'll click an access level. And remember that full access allows the user to edit and share the page. That seems a little generous for Carly and Tim here, so let's allow them just to comment on the page. And then we'll click the invite button. And that will send them an invitation by email. And because Tim hadn't created a Notion account, he'll be prompted to create one and then he'll be nurtured through the onboarding process. Also notice that our page has now moved into the shared category of our sidebar. And when Tim and Carly view this page for the first time, their avatars will appear at the top next to the share menu. You can hover your cursor over any avatar to show the user's name, email address, and the last time they viewed the page. And when they're actively viewing the page, their avatar will fill to full opacity. And as they edit the page, their avatar will follow them from block to block. Users also appear within the share menu. So here we can see Tim and Carly within the share menu, each with a dropdown where we can modify their access level or we can remove them from the page entirely. Now let's say we want our full Loggerhead Labs team to access this inspirational page. Back in the share menu, we can see an option for workspace access. If we toggle that on, we can choose to move to workspace, which moves the page into the workspace category in the sidebar of all workspace members. And by default, those members are going to have full access to the page, meaning they can edit it and share it with others. We can easily adjust that access level by using the drop down. But now let's say we're having second thoughts and we decide that this page is probably better suited for the marketing team than the full staff. So we'll remove workspace access, confirm, and the page moves back into the private category of the sidebar. And when an admin creates a group, that group is going to be in, visible in the share menu of all pages. So here we can see a pre-configured marketing group that contains two members. If we adjust their access level from disabled to can edit, then both of those members are going to have the ability to edit the page. And our page moves back into the shared category of our sidebar. So we've shared our page publicly. We've shared it with guests, with individual members, with all members, and with a group. That covers our full sharing hierarchy. Now let's take a look at some options for administrators. Within settings and members, and members, admins can view all guests of the workspace. And for each guest, there's a dropdown where they can see exactly which pages they can access. They can convert them to a member or they can remove them from the workspace entirely. For members, the dropdown allows admins to convert the member to an admin or to remove the member from the team entirely. The admin can add a new member by clicking add a member, choosing a guest, or entering an email address, and then clicking invite, which will send an invitation to that user by email. Admins can also allow any user with an email address containing an approved domain to join the workspace. If we jump over to settings, we can enter those approved domains under allowed email domains. 
Then new Notion users will have the option to join the workspace when they create their accounts. And existing users can use the workspace selection drop down and click create or join workspace. You can also send anyone your workspace's unique URL, which you can access back in settings and members and settings under domain. If we return to the members section and click the groups tab, this is where admins can manage groups. So they can use the dotted menu to rename or delete a group. They can add a member. They can remove members individually. And to create a group, they'll click the create a group button, enter a name, choose an icon if they'd like, and then add members. Lastly, admins can disable sharing options under security and SAML. Here they can prevent members from sharing pages publicly and they can disable guests, which prohibits members from sharing pages with non-members. And with that, we've covered the full scope of sharing and permissions. As any questions emerge, feel free to tweet me at William Nutt or leave a YouTube comment.